Now let us discuss about the history taking and examination of varicose veins. What are varicose veins? Varicose veins are elongated, dilated and tortuous veins of the superficial system of the lower limb which is more than 3 mm in diameter. First we have to ask about the demographic details of the patient with his name, age, sex, occupation and place. Occupation of the patient is important because patients who are forced to stand for a long period of time are predisposed to develop varicose veins. Chief complaints. Chief complaints will be dilated and toxic veins in the left, which is mainly cosmetic, and there may be discoloration of the limb due to this complication, or there may be venous ulcer. This history of presenting illness. The patient was apparently normal before six months. And then he developed dilated and toxic veins in the medial aspect of the leg for the past how many months? Um, medial aspect of the leg denotes that the great saphenous system is involved, whereas the lateral aspect denotes that the short saphenous system is involved. It was insidious and onset, progressive in nature. It becomes prominent on prolonged standing and less prominent on lying down. Because on lying down, the venous return to the heart will be more and the veins would get collapsed. It's not associated with pain or night cramps. When associated with pain, the pain will be of a dull aching type of pain and it is more towards evening. And pain occurs due to superficial thrombophilitis. And night cramps. Night cramps occur in very coarse veins because due to venous hypertension, there will be impaired blood circulation in the lower limb. Especially when the legs are at inactivity during night time. Then discoloration and itching in the left leg for the past three months. Now, discoloration, itching, and also edema occurs because there is venous stasis and also venous hypertension. Due to this, the all thrombosis occurs and all disease gets lysed and hemocytosis is deposited. The discoloration is due to the deposition of hemocytosis. Whereas itching is due to the irritation of the free nerve endings by the hemosiderin deposition and edema markers due to venous taste and venous hypertension in the superficial system of the limb. Edema occurs during the end of the day and is relieved after a period of rest. It's not associated with pain. It's not associated with pain is important because in case of DVT there would be edema which is associated with pain. History of also over the medial aspect of the left angle for the past one week. It occurred following a trauma by scratching. It is due to the presence of itching. It is associated with scanty serous discharge. It is not blood stain and not cold smelling and it is not associated with pain. Now, what is the characteristic of a venous ulcer? The site is often in the lower one third of the medial side of the leg. The shape is usually oval in shape and margins will be well defined, the edge will be sloping in nature, the floor will be formed by the deep fascia, there will be pigmentation eczema in the surrounding skin and the base may extend up to periosteum and it may produce a talipus equinovarus deformity. Now there is no history of fever, no history of prolonged immobilization, there is no history of pain during walking. These three are asked in order to rule out DVT. Now DVT may cause varicose veins. It is asked to rule out etiology. And the other etiology is whenever there is an increase into abnormal pressure, it may lead to reflux. Therefore, there is not to rule out into abdominal pathology. We are asking of no history of abdominal distension and no history of constipation and there is no history of trauma. Then past history. There is no history of similar complaints in the past. There is no history of any surgery in the past. The patient is not a known case of diabetes, hypertension, asthma, epilepsy, TB, ischemic heart disease. No history of any prolonged intake. In this we have to ask about whether the patient has taken any treatment for varicose veins such as uh, bandages or has applied any ointment or the patient may have done a Cleotherapy before and maybe a recurrence also. In personal history, he is on mixer diet, 
alcoholic, not a smoker, no risk of an allergy, normal bowel and bladder habits. Smoking is important because um, smoking causes damage to collagen, which may in turn cause damage to the valves of the veins. Family history. There is no complaint of similar complaint in the family. Varicose veins can run in families. This familial condition is known as triple trinarone syndrome, which is characterized by abnormal lateral venous complex, which is the short shaft in the system, capillary nevus, bony abnormalities, aplasia of deep veins, and limb lengthening. Now, summary a 65 years old man working as a tea master came with complaints of dilatory and toxic veins in the in the aspect of the left lower limb for the past six months, discoloration, swelling, and itching for the past three months, ulcer for the past one week, with no other positive history. Now, his etiology is that being a tea master, he is forced to stand for a long period of time, and hence, this is a secondary varicose vein. Now, in general examination, the patient is conscious, oriented, comfortable, moderately built, and moderately nourished. No pallor, cyanosis, clubbing, cellulose lymphadenopathy. Pitting pedal edema is present in the left leg. And vitals, you have to look for pulse, BP, respiratory rate, and temperature. Now, let's look at this. You can see that there are dilated toxic veins here, and then they disappear, and again they appear at this place. Here you can see some dilated veins here and here. This is the great saphenous system. The great saphenous vein passes in the anterior and anterior medial aspect in the leg. Then at the knee joint, it passes posterior to the knee joint, and then coming above the knee, it again becomes anterior medial. And now, what are the perforators which are present along the course of the great saphenous vein? There are certain fixed or permanent perforators which are named. The first of which is we can look from below upwards. Now, the first thing is have to look at the angle perforators. The angle perforators are inconstant and they are named as May or Custer perforators. Then you can remember there are three perforators here which you can remember by the mnemonic common bile duct. C stands for cocket, B for void and D for dot. The cocket perforator it is three in number which is the lower leg perforators or calf perforators. Then the below knee perforator, which is situated at this point, is the void perforator. Here you can see that there is a blowout at this point, which indicates that the void perforator is incompetent, and the above knee perforator around this place is the dot perforator. Then above in the adductor canal, you will have the Adductor canal perforator or Huntington perforator at the mid thigh level. This local examination of the left lower Inspection of the patient is done in standing position. There is dilated and toxic so veins seen over the anterior and medial aspect of the left leg. There is hyperpigmentation. You see, there is hyperpigmentation over the lower one third of the limb. And edema is present below the left knee. Then there are multiple ulcers which are present over the medial aspect of the ankle. This is of variable size. The largest one is 2 cross 1 cm, irregular in shape, well defined margin, sloping it, healthy granulation tissue is present on the floor, there is no discharge. The sounding skin source hyperpigmentation. And there is no redness, no scars are seen, there is no loss of hair and brittleness of the nails, no deformity is present. You have to look for Equinous deformity because in the case of a varicose ulcer, the patient's pain is relieved when the patient walks on toes. Therefore, in order to avoid pain, the patient continuously walks on his toes and later he develops the equinous deformity. We are looking for goodness, 
not to rule out DVT because in case of DVT there will be edema and there will be redness and also there will be pain. Palpation. There is no warm, no tenderness. Lipodermatosclerosis is present. What is lipodermatosclerosis? Lipodermatosclerosis is progressive sclerosis of the skin and subcutaneous tissue which may occur due to fibrin deposition, tissue death and scarring due to chronic venous hypertension. Just again you have to look at the ulcer. How will you examine the ulcer? How to examine the size of the ulcer by using a sterile gauze. How to place the gauze over the ulcer and then you have to take it off and measure the size of the ulcer. Just 2 cos 1 cm, in shape, well defined margin, sloping edge, healthy granulation tissue, there is no discharge. The base is not induated, is not fixed. You are seeing this because in case of a long standing ulcer, it may go into a modulin cause normal. It does not bleed on touch. Just we have to look for arterial pulsations. Pulsations are felt in the posterior tibial and dorsal is, is artery. And lymph nodes are not palpable. We have to do lymph node examination of the inguinal region because since there is a venous ulcer, it may have got secondary infected and the inguinal lymph nodes may be enlarged. Then, now what are the tests that we would like to do in the patient with varicose veins? First is the Booty Tendlenburg 1 test. Booty Tendlenburg 1 test is in order to find out whether the saphenofemoral uh, valve is competent or not. Now, how will you do Goody Tendlenburg 1 test? You have to make the patient lie down in a recommended position and then you have to raise his legs in order to empty the vein. And then you can either tie a tourniquet below the saphenofemoral junction or use your thumb to occlude the saphenofemoral junction. Now, where is the saphenofemoral junction? The saphenofemoral junction is situated 4 cm lateral and below the pubic tubercle. Now, after occluding the saphenofemoral junction of the uh, tying a tourniquet, make the patient to stand up and immediately release the tourniquet or immediately release the occlusion. If there is a fast filling from above downwards, it indicates that the saphenofemoral junction is incompetent. From above downwards, it is retrograde filling of the vein. Normally, arterial supply will come from heart to the lower limb and venous drainage has to go from the limb to the heart. That is, the vein has to uh, fill from below upwards. But here, due to saphenofemoral incompetence, the blood is coming from the femoral vein into great saphenous vein and thus it fills from above downwards. Then you have to do Goody Tendlenburg 2 test, which is used to test for perforator incompetence. Now you have to make the patient then lying or come in position like before and raise to empty the vein and then either use your thumb to approve the saphenofemoral junction or tie a tourniquet and ask the patient to stand up. Now do not release the tourniquet or occlusion. Just observe the vein. A gradual filling of veins is seen. It indicates that the perforators are incompetent. Next, you have to do a mock this cough impulse test. Now, you have to make the patient lie down in supine position, raise his leg and empty the vein. And now, uh, make the patient's limb to rest on the bed. Now, keep your finger over the saphenofemoral junction and ask the patient to cough forcefully. If you can Feel a positive thrill on coughing, it indicates that Marx's is cough impulse test is present. Marx's is cough impulse test indicates that the saphenofemoral junction is incompetent. Just you have to do the multiple tourniquet test. We do the multiple tourniquet test in order to find out which perforators are incompetent. We saw that there are uh, five constant perforators, named perforators in the leg. Now we have to tie about four or five tourniquets in the First, you have to make the patient to lie down in pain position, raise his limb, and then tie about four or five tourniquets, which can be tied as one tourniquet below the saphenofemoral junction, uh, one tourniquet below the mid thigh level, 
one tonic at below the knee, uh, one tonic at, uh, at the level of calf, and one tonic at just above the ankle. And now ask the patient to stand up. You have to see between which tonic wits the vein is getting filled up. If, uh, if the vein between two tonic wits are getting filled up, then that portion of the then the perforator in that portion of the vein is incompetent for example if the vein between the tonicles with this tight uh, just above the knee and below the knee are getting filled up it indicates that the below knee perforator is incompetent similarly if the uh, Whenever the vein between the tonicles is tied below the knee and at the calf level are getting filled up, it indicates that the calf perforators are incompetent. Then you have to do Fegan's test. Fegan's test, first you have to make the patient stand, mark where there are blowouts. Blowouts means that uh, very much large dilation is visible. And then you have to make the patient lie down in position and raise his legs so that the vein is emptied. Now run your finger along the course of the vein. Wherever you have marked the blowout, you can feel that there is a dip. The dip is uh, because there is a um, defect in the deep fascia because the perforator vein is enlarged so much and has also caused the enlargement of the deep fascia. Marking of the uh, defects the deep fascia is important because you have to do perforator ligation during surgery and it is difficult to find out where these perforators are in surgery because you will make the patient to lie down under anesthesia and you cannot see the blocks. Hence, you have to do it before surgery itself on the day, the morning of surgery or on the day before surgery. The Schwartz test. Schwartz test. In Schwartz test, you are not going to empty the vein. We are going to perform Schwartz test with the vein dilated and toxic. So make the patient stand, keep your thumb at the saphenofemoral junction and tap where there is uh, large prominence along the vein. When you are tapping the prominence of the vein, if you feel an impulse at the saphenofemoral junction, it indicates that there is a continuous column of blood. Yes, you have to do examination of the other limb because there are more chances that the other limb will also have varicose veins. Yes, the other sterile examination, abdominal examination is important because we know that uh, an increase in the abdominal pressure may have caused varicose veins. Inspection, you have to see whether there are any dilated veins, any visible swelling or moss, and palpation, you have to look for any organ or megaly, there is any. Arthritis, the cardiovascular system, for the second heart sounds are heard, no respiratory system, normal club blood sounds heard, no added sounds. And no added sounds, you have to look for any chronic bronchitis, then central nervous system, no focal neurological deficit, diagnosis. You have to mention whether this is a case of primary or secondary varicose vein, which slim involving the gray tox, short saphenous system or both, and which vessels are incompetent. Whether perforator is incompetent or the saphenofemoral junction is incompetent. Then you have to mention about seep classification. Now, what is seep classification? Seep classification stands for C stands for clinical sign, E stands for etiological classification, A for anatomic classification. P for pathophysiologic dysfunction. C, Z0 means that there is no visible or pathological signs of venous disease. C1, telangiectasia tissue reticular veins. C2 means varicose veins. C3 is edema. C4 is skin changes due to venous disease such as pigmentation, venous eczema, lipodermatosclerosis. C5 is healed venous ulcer. C6 is active venous ulcer. Since we have a active venous also here we have classification of c6 then etiology whether it is 
EC concentrate and EP primary, ES secondary, EN no venous causes identified. Anatomy EAS superficial venous, EAP perforator veins, EAD deep venous, EAN no venous location. And pathophysiology PR stands for reflex, PO stands for obstruction, PRO both reflex and obstruction, P and no venous pathophysiology is identified. Just investigation. We will have a routine investigation. Then the important thing is do plus scan of the lower body. Uh, by using do plus scan, we can uh, see how long the vein saphenous vein is uh, dilated, and we can also see which perforators are in con. Within. We can see whether there is reflux at the saphenofemoral junctions and using ultrasound we have to mark the perforators which are incompetent. And also we can see whether the short saphenous system is normal or not. And important we have to rule out whether there is deep vein thrombosis or not. Because if there is deep vein thrombosis then surgery for varicose veins is contraindicated. Because in DVT the only system which is uh, the only way for the blood from the lower limb to drain is the superficial. Even if you block it, then the limb will go for edema and progress will go towards venous gangrene. Also, clinically, we have to look for deep vein thrombosis by Perthes test, modified Perthes test, Homan sign, and Moses sign. Now, what is Perthes test? In Perthes test, we would uh, tie an elastic bandage of the whole limb and ask the patient to walk for some time. If there is deep vein thrombosis, uh, the elastic bandage will occlude all the superficial venous system. Therefore, uh, the blood has to go through the deep uh, thrombosed veins and the patient will develop severe uh, crampy pain. But this test is patient dependent. So it is subjective, so it is not that sensitive. Then the next test is modified Perthes test. In modified Perthes test, we have to make sure that there is no perforator incompetence. If there is perforator incompetence, then there is no use in performing the modified Perthes test. Here what we do is, without emptying, without emptying the vein, we would tie a tonic below the saphenofemoral junction and ask the patient to walk for some time. Here, if the perforators are competent, then when the patient is walking as the muscle pumps of soleus works, the blood will be pumped from superficial to deep venous system. And we can observe that the superficial veins, which was dilated when the patient starts walking, gets collapsed as the patient walks. And also, if the patient complains uh, if the patient does not have any pain, it indicates that there is no DVT. On the other hand, if the patient has deep pain thrombosis, as soon as he begins walking, the patient will have pain and also we can observe that the veins are not getting collapsed. Then Hohmann's and Moses sign. Hohmann's sign is forced doxyflexion of the ankle joint, which would cause pain when the patient has DVT. And Moses sign is Squeezing of the cough muscles, which would cause severe pain to the patient. Our Moses sign is now contraindicated because it may cause dislodgement of emboli and may cause pulmonary embolism. Then you have to do USC abdomen. Ultrasound of abdomen is done in order to find out any new abdominal pathology, which may be predisposing factor for development of recosense. Then X ray of angles on. We are doing X-ray of angle joint here because the patient had venous ulcer. We have to find out whether it's causing periosteitis. Now, what are the complications of varicose veins? Now, well, it is divided into complications which are due to the dilated veins, then complications which are due to skin changes and due to ulcer. The dilated vein due to any trivial trauma may rupture and cause hemorrhage. There may be thrombosis in the superficial vein which is known as superficial thrombophlebitis. Then skin changes, eczema can be there, pigmentation can be there and lipodermatosclerosis may develop 
and due to ulcer the ulcer may turn into module in ulcer it may yeah, go inside and it may cause a osteitis tibia in a long standing ulcer and equinus deformity may develop now treatment uh, treatment of varicose veins is Trendelenburg surgery Trendelenburg surgery is nothing but a flush ligation at the saphenofemoral junction with stripping of the great saphenous nerve along with subfacial endoscopic perforator ligation now what are the latest advancements in surgery of varicose veins the latest advancements are endovenous laser ablation radiofrequency ablation sclerotherapy Thank you.